From inside Ralph Engelstead Arena, it's time for North Dakota Hockey with Dave Haxtell. Welcome. I'm your host, Dan Hammer. On tonight's show, the coach and I will review North Dakota's sweep of Lake Superior State. We'll take a look at the attention to detail that Markle Parks has given to his defensive game to make him one of the NCHC leaders, not only in points, but plus minus. And we'll preview North Dakota's trip to Denver this weekend for another key series in the NCHC. Coach, good to be back with you again after your 7-4 and 3-1 win over the Lakers. Two very different hockey games this past weekend. Yeah, one was up and down and a lot of scoring opportunities, uh, you know, for us on, on Friday night and uh, Saturday night. Much tighter contest right from the, the drop of the puck through. Uh, but both turn out to be good wins for us. A week ago, you previewed that there may be some guys getting in the lineup and uh, playing some roles, people like Colton Sanderson and so forth. You had to feel good overall about the roles that those players played. Well, you know, that's uh, those are decisions that are made not just over the short term. Uh, you know, watching Colton Sanderson practice and the things that he's bringing to the table week in and week out give us confidence to put him in the lineup. I thought he went in and he did a, he did a real good job. He was a sound two-way player. He was part of a huge goal for us on Friday night that yep. gave us an opportunity to dig out. So a lot of positives there. All right, Dave, when we come back, we'll take a look at Friday night's highlights. North Dakota rallies for a 7-4 win. North Dakota Hockey with Dave Hackstall on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sioux Shop at Ralph Ingalls Stad Arena, the Greater Grand Forks Convention and Visitors Bureau, Indian Triumph of Fargo, and by Hot Springs Spas and Pool Tables, too. Welcome back. North Dakota and Lake Superior State meeting for the first time since 1973. Dave, let's take a look at Friday night's highlights. Cam Johnson gets his first collegiate start in this hockey game. You'll come in as the number one ranked team in the country and yet good sustained pressure over the first seven or eight minutes of this hockey game. Dave. We did. We absolutely had the type of start that we wanted to have, Dan. We, we came out, we were on our toes, uh, generating all kinds of opportunities. Uh, just not not able to put one in. Yeah, probably great opportunities, but not as many finishes as you would hope, right? Yeah, you know, we talk about that uh, that intensity and in finishing and taking advantage of opportunities. I think that's an area that uh, that our team is still growing within. Nick Schmaltz setting up Luke Johnson for the two on one there. And despite the strong start to the first seven or eight minutes, you found yourself down two nothing after the first period in this game. Yeah, you know, it ends up being uh, kind of a theme defensively of uh, face offs. Mm -hmm. We gave up three three goals against uh, off of face offs within uh, like you saw there a few seconds or within uh, you know eight to ten seconds. Yeah. You go to the second period you've lost Drake Kajula and Colton St. Clair to injury so now you're short you got 16 skaters second period 54 seconds in Lakers make it three nothing you make a goaltender change here and McIntyre replaces Johnson. Yeah this was just a tough play for Cam you know uh, coming in on that play he just he just wasn't seeing or feeling the puck and you saw that rebound go to the uh, to the far side it was time to make a change for our team. Um, you know, and uh, and really for our team, it was a test of mental toughness. Things haven't gone our way, even though we played quite well. Yeah. Uh, we've lost a couple of key players out of our lineup, uh, and we're down in a deep hole in our building. Now yeah. it's about digging out. Well, and the game changed right here on this power play. It's 4-1 at the time, but Tucker Pullman gets you within 4-2, and really the game did change dra dramatically. Two freshmen that uh, were starting to count on making plays for us. Nick Schmaltz to Tucker Pullman yeah. uh, with a huge power play goal. The first shift after the goal was the Gorder line. They had a great shift. The second shift was the McMillan line, and you get another goal with this shift here. Yeah, you know, just to uh, just to keep us moving in the right direction. Uh, you know, we uh, we had a lot of guys that just went out and did the right things. You know, mm -hmm. and I, I uh, the momentum in the building at this point in time Woo. was unstoppable. And the energy that was in the building played a huge role in our ability to come back. Without a doubt. Uh, as you see Michael Parks throwing it in front, Stefan Patton there screening yep. Dave Field and, and the goal. And, and now, as you said, the building is jumping. You, you talk about Tucker Pullman and his playmaking ability, even though by trade he's a D-man. Here's a nice play that sets up a scoring chance. Well, you know, and it's uh, it's just going out and playing hockey. And that's, you know, we, we uh, asked Tucker once again, this time mid-game, to move from defense to forward yeah. uh, out of necessity with the injuries that we had up front. Uh, and he just consistently went out and made plays. Uh, you know, if, if you remember back to the Air Force game, I thought Tucker was one of the guys that went out with the mentality to change the outcome of that game every shift. 
he also was one of the guys that did the same thing on this particular night. He certainly did. Fans on their feet here. You have the Lakers under siege with 23 shots of goal in the second. Then you get two goals in the final minute and 14 of the second period here. Well, and that's uh, obviously, you know, was, uh, was capping off uh, the, uh, the comeback attempt uh, again here. Just a real good power play, uh, you know. Uh, having Nick Schmaltz back on that unit, making, you know, good plays with the puck uh, has made a real difference. And Tucker Poolman finishes off a real nice tic-tac-toe play yeah. here on the rebound. Great passing play here to tie yeah. the game. Yep, yeah. and that's, you know, that's, a, that's just a field play. The guys uh, run through this hundreds of times uh, in the first half of the year. Um, it's a good read with, uh, with a down low goal line play being open. Uh, to that shooting area and Tucker on the downhill attack puts it away and just 35 seconds later you close out this five goal second period by taking the lead on a Connor Gorder goal set up by Brendan O'Donnell yeah you know everybody everybody chipping in you saw Troy Stetcher with a good whip play down the wall there and uh, Connor Gorder finishing this off it's all about everybody chipping in on a yeah. particular night like this what a second period my yeah. goodness well it was uh, it was an electric feeling in the building and it was uh, you know as you look back on it uh, it was a lot of fun uh, to see our players have the confidence to go out and do that after a tough first period yeah. uh, after giving up a goal early in the second period uh, but staying with it and having that belief in themselves so it's a one goal game yet here as we go to the third period and Third period, I think one of the keys was you were winning a lot of puck battles here to keep your momentum going in the third period. Uh, you, I mean, you knew it was going to be a, a tight battle. I mean, they've got uh, they've got a lot of pride over in their locker room, and uh, you know they went out and uh, and played hard. I, I liked our third period. I thought we did a good job. Um, as you you know, you mentioned some of the puck battles. Uh, consistently coming out on the right side of those makes a big difference. You talk about one or two saves that a goaltender has to make. This is almost a forgotten play of the course of the game, but it's a, it's a game saver by McIntyre. Yeah, you know, Paul Ledoux gets caught in a tough position there and, uh, and gets beat one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, you know, Zane makes this save look fairly easy, but it's a it's a fast play, it's a speed play, and a heck of a save. Your power play in this night, three goals and four opportunities. It was a very good all weekend long. Yeah, good mentality. Just you know, little plays uh, like you see off the wall to set up both of these shooting plays, uh, and then you know, I, I thought uh, we saw Jordan Schmaltz really get into a shooting mentality this weekend. No doubt, uh, and that really paid off for our hockey team. This one's off the off the bar and. Uh, Michael Parks finishes it off. So Parks' rebound goal makes it 6-4 now, and then you're going to close out the scoring in the final minute of the play. Uh, Brendan O'Donnell off a faceoff here, and you quickly transition, and O'Donnell will snipe it in. Yeah, uh, you know, it's just it's pretty good presence here by Brendan to set this up. Uh, you know, you, you know that uh, Lake Superior is going to be pressing, um, and they are. They're, they're trying to push for the turnover to go the other direction. Uh, you know, Brendan makes no mistake on the two-on-one right play to uh, to find the short side and shoot it in. And of course, your team is 15-0-1 uh, now, and Brendan O'Donnell scores a goal. So, despite losing Kajula and St. Clair, 13 players in the scoring column, and they reacted as you said, what was a fun night after that 4-1 deficit. You know, a couple bounces there early didn't go our way, and uh, you know, we just we were playing good hockey. We just had to stick with it and. Uh, I think uh, over the 60 minutes, we built a pretty solid win there. I was pretty crazy to be a part of. Like uh, after we made it 4-3, there was a TV timeout, and uh, it was one of the loudest I've ever heard the Ralph. It was uh, it was pretty cool to be a part of, and and uh, just see the guys all working together, and uh, you know. Uh, we didn't uh, count ourselves out, even even down three goals, and you know, we got one, we got two, we got three, and, and just kept going. It was uh, it was pretty special to be a part of for sure. Well, freshman Tucker Pullman has shown the ability to adapt his freshman season. A defenseman by trade, he's been asked to play at the blue line, right wing and left wing. He says the confidence the coaching staff has instilled in him has made him comfortable wherever he's asked to play. Uh, you know, it's been a little whirlwind, but uh, the coaches, uh, you know, and the other players on the team are always letting me know where I should be at on the ice or when I get back to a bench if uh, there's other positions. So they've all been helping me, which has been nice. And, uh, you know, I'm just having fun with it. The coaches have confidence in you no matter where you go. How much confidence does that give you? Uh, you know, it gives a lot that they believe in me and they, could, they feel like they can throw me anywhere. So, uh, you know, it definitely gives me a lot of confidence out there. Dave, uh, about a week ago, you and I were chatting about Tucker Pullman in the press conference portion of the week, and you mentioned the reason he can adapt is playmaking ability. Tell us a little bit more about that. 
Well, he's, you know, he's just, he's a hockey player. He can go out and it doesn't matter what the position is. He can think the game. He's confident uh, in, in making plays. And most importantly, he, you know, he wants to be in the situations where he can affect the outcome of the hockey game. A gamer as a freshman. It's a great way to put it. He's absolutely a gamer and he's been important for us thus far in our season. A 7-4 win on Friday night. When we come back, we'll take a look at Saturday's highlights. Much different style of game on Saturday night. North Dakota Hockey with Dave Hagstall on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sue Shop at Ralph Ingalls Stad Arena, the Greater Grand Forks Convention and Visitors Bureau, Indian Triumph of Fargo, and by Hot Springs Spas and Pool Tables too. Welcome back. Dave, let's take a look at Saturday night's highlights as you go for the sweep of Lake Superior State. And again, Saturday night, similar to Friday night, you have good pressure early in the first period. A recurring theme here for your hockey team over the last six games. We've been, you know, we, we've made a real uh, emphasis on coming out of the gates uh, and, and being a little more ready in our own building and trying to build that momentum. And, you know, we didn't get as many pucks to the net on Saturday night early on as we wanted, but as you see in the highlights, we did have some real good opportunities. You know, we uh, we talked briefly here uh, about Austin Pagansky and this unit uh, and the consistent pressure that they brought uh, to the table for our team on uh, both Friday and Saturday night. Yeah, I thought Austin Pagansky had the best weekend of his young uh, freshman career here. Very energized, played well. He was physical, as you'll see coming up here as well. So did a lot of good things for you. He did. He, uh, you can see him track this play right here and just lay a heavy body on one of Lake Superior's uh, defensemen. Uh, but he was doing a little bit of everything. Now yeah. it's, you know, now the next step for him in his progression is uh, is finding that confidence and finding the back of the net. And that will come in the second half. Well, you played a very physical game on Saturday night, a low scoring physical kind of grinding game. No score at the end of one. And then the second period, special teams are a winning edge for you again, and that's your first goal. Yeah, they really separated, uh, you know, our, our two teams here over the weekend, our overall specialty teams play. We didn't feel like we got enough pucks to the net on uh, in the first period on Saturday. We talked about that a little bit after the first period. We needed to do a little bit better uh, and on a power play. It was nice to be able to uh, uh, to open up the scoring and, uh, and take the lead. Yeah, and again, it all starts with Jordan Schmaltz throwing the puck on. Well, again, it's you know it's uh, not getting too cute, having good net front and getting pucks to the net and. You know, it's a fine line in front of that net, and uh, Brendan does a good job there, staying out of the blue paint, but taking away the goaltender's eyes. The puck goes off of him uh, and over the goaltender and in. You allowed just six shots on goal in the first 40 minutes of the hockey game, but defensively very strong on this night. Well, we were working hard. You know, that's uh, that's just you know purely and simply the players working hard. Uh, battling hard, uh, getting into the right spots coverage-wise and winning battles. Here's the Gorder line creating another chance. Gorder, Sanderson, Pagansky, that line very strong on Saturday night. Go to the third now, and Lake Superior had a little pushback here in the third period, didn't they? They did. They, you know, and again, you know that a, a team is going to come out. It's uh, third period. It's Saturday night. You lay everything on the line. Uh, and they, you know, they had a couple of good grade A opportunities. Zane McIntyre was uh, was good, was solid, uh, and our our team had an answer at the other end. Just under 12 to play now. After sustained pressure, you're going to build the lead to two nothing here. Yeah, you know, a couple bombs go to the net. They don't get there, and then we just look for a whip play from uh, from the near side here. It's not a fancy play, but uh, you know, on a on a night like this where Lake Superior is. Uh, doing a great job in lanes. They're blocking shots. They're battling hard. You just have to find ways and avenues to get pucks to the net. And this one has eyes. Luke Johnson with a good whip play. Without a doubt, Johnson makes it to nothing. You talk about block shots by Lake Superior. Your team was very good in this department, especially in the third period. Nine block shots. Well, I thought Trevor Olson was a real uh, leader in terms of mentality for shot blocking. And, you know, we've seen it time and again the last month in practice uh, where he's willing to do it uh, and willing to set that tone. And there's no question that on this particular night, as you see on this shift, yeah. uh, he was a guy that was a real leader for us. And that's something that grows and builds within your locker room uh, yeah. when guys are willing to do it. Very scary moments here uh, in the third period. Sophomore defenseman Troy Stetcher goes into the wall, skates first. His lower left leg uh, seems to suffer the worst of it. Uh, uh, any update at this point on how uh, Troy is doing? Well, we're still a little too early to know what the, the long-term uh, outcome is going to be. We're going to we're going to make sure we're detailed in yeah. our in our medical 
uh, evaluations. Uh, we know that he won't be available for this weekend and, uh, and probably for the foreseeable right. future, uh, but uh, we'll wait before we make any official response. It, it took some energy out of the building, Dave, and then Lake Superior State scored shortly after, so it's a 2-1 hockey game. And at that juncture, you seem to challenge your hockey team on the bench. Well, it's always a hard thing to see when, uh, when a teammate has uh, this type of an injury, uh, but it's at that point in the game where you have to refocus your mind uh, you know, we, we've got one job to do, and it's go out and close out a game. That's the best thing you can do for a teammate in this situation. Go out and get the job done. Well, That's you had what a, guys did. They certainly did. A, a couple very near goals here. Trevor Olson, great play. Hits the uh, crossbar a little bit later. Nick Schmaltz is going to hit the post as you have your own pushback here in late in the third. Yeah, I, I like the confidence that we had, you know, and this is on... Uh, uh, on the power play just before we end up scoring uh, the uh, the insurance marker uh, but guys just settling in and making plays uh, doing it with confidence those are the things that you look for and on this particular night uh, you know we, we definitely did that uh, and you know had the uh, the insurance marker coming up right here yeah with 301 left to play uh, Jordan Schmaltz he, he now leads all NCHC defensemen in points will blast at home and and that'll give you your final separation point a 3-1 win in this hockey game and your first home sweep of the season so uh, your players had a chance and the fans did to enjoy the stick salute following well, this game maybe uh, maybe fitting with how important our fans were in the comeback uh, bid on Friday night yeah. and bringing that energy uh, and then just the uh, the phenomenal crowd that we had again on Saturday night uh, for our non-conference series um, you know really nice to be able to salute our fans before we uh, you know, we end our uh, first half home uh, schedule. 3-1, the final there. Again, a very defensive-toned hockey game on Saturday night. Yeah, you're going to have all different kinds. And, you know, I, again, I like the fact that uh, we only gave up, you know, eight or nine scoring chances. Uh, we were hard to play against defensively. We were pretty good without the puck, uh, and we generated enough offensively to come out with the close win. Coming up next here on North Dakota Hockey with Dave Haxtell, Michael Parks enjoying a banner senior season, and we'll preview North Dakota's return to league play with a trip to Denver. North Dakota Hockey with Dave Haxtell on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sue Shop at Ralph Ingolstadt Arena. The Greater Grand Forks Convention and Visitors Bureau, Indian Triumph of Fargo, and by Hot Springs Spas and Pool Tables, too. Welcome back. Senior right wing Michael Parks is among the NCHC leaders in scoring and plus minus ratio. Of course, he's a humble man, but he's put in a lot of work to get to this point where he's playing some of the best hockey of his career. Snuggerud with a drive. Michael Parks wasn't a guy UND relied on in special teams, even as recent as last season. But this year, he's been a regular on the penalty kill, a sign of Parks' attention to detail on the defensive side of the game. I think studied that part of the game uh, and, and really worked uh, just to grow the awareness defensively of his game. And that's probably where most of it starts, is that defensive awareness and putting the effort into, uh, into learning that side of the game. His numbers, well-rounded. Entering the weekend, Parks was tied for second among all NCHC players in scoring, while he was third overall in plus-minus. He's grown and matured as a player. Uh, he's, become, he's, he's become a pretty good 200-foot player. In a season that sees UND leading the nation in shorthanded goals, Parks is responsible for setting up two of the season's most important. His play in overtime against Air Force led UND to a come-from-behind win. Parks, though, directed the praise to his teammates. You know, he was strong on a stick and buried it, you know. He made it look easy. And last week against Omaha, he set up Parks Steph Patton's shorthanded game winner. Again, Parks' humble nature was on display. That was all Patton. Uh, I just knew he was coming right there. I wanted to get it to him. He made a great play to stay on side and he like, put it through his legs or something. Obviously, the shot was uh, was unreal. It's not a, an easy thing to do uh, and be genuine about it. But I know Mike does deflect that praise. And uh, most importantly, I know he's genuine in, in doing that. He's a pretty humble guy. Uh, he's a hardworking guy. And 
Uh, as he's grown uh, in, in our program, he's become a pretty good leader because of a lot of those things. He's really committed to playing all three ends or all three zones of the rink, and um, you know, it's uh, playing great defensively helps out with the offense. So he's been creating turnovers and um, being sound in the defensive zone helps him create some more offense for himself as well. So he's uh, he's been a great all-around player for us, and we expect him to keep doing that. Next up, Dave, a trip to Denver this weekend. You close out the first half, which will be a very a stern challenge as you go to Denver this weekend. Yeah, no question. Uh, Denver's playing great hockey. They went and uh, you know out to Cornell, real tough building, oh. uh, and had a great series out there. Extremely mobile decor, uh, always in attack mode. Uh, collectively, an outstanding group of forwards, uh, and uh, just should set up to be a, a real challenging and a great uh, series of college hockey. What are your points of emphasis for your hockey team as you look at the specific matchup with Denver? Well, for us, really, it's not even about the specific match with Denver. It's looking within. It's having that uh, that great focus. Uh, and having that final push as we go into our uh, Christmas break. All right, Dave, good luck in Denver. We'll recap that series next weekend, and we're back with some final thoughts next year on North Dakota Hockey with Dave Hackstall. North Dakota Hockey with Dave Hackstall on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sue Shop at Ralph Ingolstadt Arena, the Greater Grand Forks Convention and Visitors Bureau, Indian Triumph of Fargo, and by Hot Springs Spas and Pool Tables, too. Three North Dakota players have earned Player of the Week honors from the NCHC. Jordan Schmaltz, who leads all defensemen in scoring in the league, is the Defensive Player of the Week. Tucker Poolman, the Rookie of the Week. And Zane McIntyre, named the Goaltender of the Week in the NCHC. North Dakota picked up more first-place votes this week and strengthened its hold on the number one ranking in the nation. UND will take that ranking to Magnus Arena this weekend for a series against Denver. We'll recap that next week here on North Dakota Hockey with Dave Haxtall.